In this lesson, we're going to cover separable equations. We have a note here. It says, we have looked at differential equations from a geometric point of view, direction fields, or slope fields, and also from a numerical point of view, Euler's method. Now we will look at techniques for solving specific kinds of differential equations. Our definition is a separable equation. It's a first order differential equation in which the expression for dy dx can be factored as a function of x times a function of y. It can be written in the form dy dx equals g of x times f of y. The term separable comes from the fact that the expression on the right side can be separated into a function of x and a function of y. All x terms can be collected with dx and all y terms with dy, and a solution can be obtained by separation of variables and then integration. This example says find the solution of the differential equation that satisfies the given initial condition. We have y prime equals y cosine of x divided by 1 plus y squared, and the initial condition is y of 0 equals 1. The first step, wherever you see y prime, you're going to rewrite that as dy dx, and then I just copied everything else down. And next we're going to separate the variables. So we want all the y's and dy on the left, and we want all the x's and dx on the right. This is a proportion, and so everything is going to move diagonally across the equal sign. So this dx right now is on the bottom left, it's going to move up to the right. This entire expression, 1 plus y squared, is going to move up to the left. The dy will stay there. And then this is a product up here, so we'll move this y down to the left. And I made a note, separate variables, leaving any constants on the right side. So again, we have the y's and dy on the left, we have x's and dx on the right, and if there was a plain constant in this problem, we would leave that on the right side. Now that we have the variables separated, we're going to integrate both sides. And before we integrate this side, we're going to split this up to 1 over y plus y squared over y. And y squared divided by y is just going to be y. Next, the integral of 1 over y is going to be ln absolute value of y. The integral of y is 1 half y squared, and the integral of cosine is sine. Both of these are indefinite integrals, so we would put an arbitrary constant right here and then also another one right here, but we always could just subtract this arbitrary constant over and then combine them, so instead we're just going to put 1 plus c on the right. Our next step is we're going to plug in the initial condition and then we're going to solve for c. The initial condition is y of 0 equals 1. So we're going to plug in 1 for all the y's, and we're going to plug in 0 for x. So right here we have the absolute value of 1, which is 1, and ln of 1 is 0. Next we have 1 half times 1 squared, which just ends up being 1 half, and sine of 0 is 0. So all that's left on the right side is just c. Once you find c, you take it and you plug it back in the first place that it appeared. So we end up getting ln absolute value of y plus 1 half y squared equals sine of x plus 1 half. Looking over here on the left side of the equation, because we have y inside of a natural log and we have y squared, it's impossible for us to solve this equation for y, so that's why we're just going to leave the answer like this. If you can solve for y, then you want to go ahead and do so. This example says, find an equation of the curve that passes through the point 1, 1, and whose slope at x, y is y squared over x cubed. So since the slope is y squared over x cubed, we're going to write that out as dy dx equals y squared over x cubed. Since we want to find an equation of the curve, we're going to use the same process to separate the variables, integrate, and then we'll have it in y equals form. So our first step is separating the variables. So we're going to move this y squared down to the left, and then we'll move this dx up to the right. Next, we're going to integrate both sides. And in order to integrate 1 over y squared, we're going to rewrite it as y to the negative 2. And we'll do the same thing on this side. To integrate this, we're going to rewrite it as x to the negative 3. Okay, so we integrated both sides, and we have plus c on the right. So before we do anything else, I'm going to rewrite this as negative 1 over y. And I'm going to rewrite this side by bringing this x to the negative 2 down as well. Next, it says that the curve passes through the point 1, 1. So we're going to plug in 1 for x and 1 for y into this equation to solve for c. So on the left, we get negative 1. And on the right, we get negative 1 half. Now we add 1 half over, and that makes negative 1 half. And now that we have c, we're going to take c and plug it back into the equation. Now that we plugged in c, we just want to clean up this equation. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to times the entire equation by a negative. Next, we want this to be one fraction, so we're going to times this by x squared on top and bottom. And now this will combine. And the last thing we need to do is we need to get this y out of the denominator. So since this is a proportion, we're going to move everything diagonally across the equal sign. So for the equation of the curve that passes through the point 1, 1, we end up getting this, y equals 2x squared over 1 plus x squared. 
This example says solve the differential equation. So we're going to separate the variables, bringing the y's over here with the dy, and then bringing this dx up to the right. So we have ln of y over y dy equals 1 half x dx. So again, there was a 2 here, so we just left it on the right side. So now we're going to integrate both sides. To integrate this side, we're going to let u equal this ln of y on top. Next, we take the derivative with respect to y. And next, we'll rewrite this as dy equals y times du. So we're going to plug all of this in over here. And it works out great because these y's are going to cancel. So now we're ready to integrate. So we integrated this side, and then we integrated this side, and then I put a plus c sub 1, and I'll explain that in just a second. Next, we're going to plug this u back in. At this point, if we had an initial condition, we would plug it in and solve for c. But because we don't, we're going to just continue and solve for y. So first step, we're going to times both sides of the equation by 2. So timesing this side by 2, it gets rid of this 1 half. So now we just have ln of y quantity squared. When we times this side by 2, 2 times 1 fourth makes 1 half. And then right here, I just wrote it as 2 c sub 1. Next, to get rid of this square, we're going to square root both sides. So when we square root both sides, it gets rid of this square, and we just have ln of y. On this side, we put plus or minus the square root of this side of the equation. And you'll notice now, instead of 2 c sub 1, I just wrote c. And that's because, remember, c is an arbitrary constant. So when you times one constant by 2, it still is just another arbitrary constant. So I just made a note of that over here. To get the y by itself, we're going to exponentiate using base e. So we write e on both sides of the equation, and then we bring both of these sides up into their exponents. So our final answer is y equals e raised to the plus or minus square root of 1 half x squared plus c power. And that's our final answer. This example says find the solution of the differential equation that satisfies the given initial condition. For part a, we have dy dx equals y over 4 root x. And then we have the initial condition that y of 16 equals 1. So first step, we're going to separate the variables. Next, we're going to integrate both sides. And over here, I just rewrote the square root of x as x to the negative 1 half on top. All right, let's go ahead and integrate. At this point, we're going to plug in the initial condition y of 16 equals 1. So we'll plug 16 in for x and 1 for y. The absolute value of 1 is 1. ln of 1 is 0. And plugging in 16 right here is the same as the square root of 16. And that makes 4. And then we times that by 1 half, so we just get 2. So we end up getting that c equals negative 2. Now we're going to take this value and plug it in right here. So now we have this equation, and next we want to solve for y. So our first step in solving for y is we want to get rid of the natural log, and we're going to do so by exponentiating with base e. So we write e on both sides of the equation, and we move both of these sides up into their exponents. So on this side, the e to the ln, they undo each other, and you just have the absolute value of y. Next, we want to take the y out of the absolute value. To do so, we're going to bring in a plus or minus on the right side of the equation. So again, we drop the absolute value, we just have y, but we bring in a plus or minus on the right side. So at this point, we want to know if the equation should be a plus or a minus over here. And to check that, we're going to look at the initial condition. So our initial condition has a y value that is positive. So let's go ahead and check the positive option. So we're going to plug in 1 for y and 16 for x. And we're going to plug them into this equation, but we're going to use the positive option. So let's check to see if this gives us a true statement. The square root of 16 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. And e to the 0 is 1. So it gives us a true statement, so it checked out. So that means our answer is the positive option. And I just wrote it out. I wrote since y equals positive e to the 1 half times the square root of x minus 2 satisfies the initial condition y of 16 equals 1, it means that this is the solution to this differential equation with that initial condition. Okay, so that's our final answer for this problem, but I'm going to talk about a couple more things just in case they come up in future problems. So if you have a problem where it's a multiple choice problem and you don't have this as one of the answer choices, what could happen is this side of the problem could be split up. So I just want to make sure this makes sense. Mathematically, when you have a product of the same base number, you add their exponents. So mathematically, this is equivalent to that. So again, we can go in this direction and split up to two terms. And then this could even be rewritten where this e to the negative 2 is brought down to the denominator. So this also could be an option. So we have y equals e to the 1 half root x all divided by e squared. 
Again, this probably won't be the case, but I just wanted to show that mathematically this is also an equivalent statement to this one. The other situation I want to look at is if there's no initial condition in the given problem. So if that's the case, we would have worked this problem down, the c would have still been there, so that when we solved for y, we would have gotten y equals plus or minus e to the 1 half root x plus c, and then I just added the sub 1. So what could happen if there was no initial condition, you'd get to here, and then we can split up this e. So first, it could be split up as e to the 1 half root x times e to the c sub 1. And then right here, remember c is an arbitrary constant, and e is also a constant, approximately 2.718, and keeps going. So if you're raising e, which is a constant, to an arbitrary constant, you could conclude that this entire expression is also another generic arbitrary constant. So instead of writing it over here, you could just say this is c, and you could multiply it in the front of this expression, and then also the plus or minus could be essentially absorbed into that c value, because again, the c represents any arbitrary constant. But again, the arbitrary constant is being multiplied in front of the expression. So this very likely could come up in future problems if there's no initial condition. So that's why if you get to here and you're looking for your answer in the back of the book, for example, and you're like, wait, it's not there. What the heck happened? Um, so that's kind of the explanation to how it, you get to this. And one last thing, sometimes textbooks will use instead of C, they'll use a different letter. So like they might use a K to represent the constant. So just a heads up on that. Okay, part B says we have dy dx equals negative y over x, and the initial condition is y of negative 2 equals negative 2. So our first step is we're going to separate the variables. We'll bring this y to the left side, move this dx up, and then we're going to leave this negative on the right side. All right, so our variables are separated. Next, we're going to integrate both sides. So the integral on this side is going to be ln absolute value of y, and the integral of this is going to be negative ln absolute value of x. And then I put plus c at the end. All right, so now that we have c, we're going to plug in the initial condition to solve for c, and then we're going to take the absolute value of negative 2, which is just 2, here and here. And finally, we're going to add this over. So it's 1 ln of 2 plus another ln of 2 makes 2 ln of 2. And then we're going to bring this 2 up into the exponent, so it's going to be ln of 2 squared, which is ln of 4. Now that we have c, we're going to plug it in back here. And then next, I'm going to flip these around. So now we can condense them. So at this point, we want to solve for y, so we're going to exponentiate using base e. So these undo each other, and you just have the absolute value of y, and that happens over here as well. And finally, we're going to take this y out of the absolute value by bringing in a plus or minus on the right side. So we get y equals plus or minus 4 over the absolute value of x. So I just wanted to point out, again, our goal was to solve for y, so to bring that y out of the absolute value, we brought in a plus or minus on the right side. We didn't actually do anything with this absolute value of x here, we just leave it in the denominator. Next, to figure out if our answer should have a plus or a minus, we're going to look at the initial condition. So when you look at the initial condition, you'll notice that the y value is negative. So because of that, I want to check the negative option. So we'll plug in negative 2 for y and then negative 2 for x. And again, we're using the negative option. So we have negative 2 equals, and then I drop down this negative, 4 over the absolute value of negative 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is just 2. And we have a true statement, so it checks out. So I wrote it out, since y equals negative 4 over the absolute value of x satisfies the initial condition that y of negative 2 equals negative 2, then that's going to be our final answer. Again, it's y equals negative 4 over the absolute value of x. This example says, the silvery blue-green coloring of the Colorado blue spruce makes it a perfect Christmas tree. For a tree farmer in upstate New York, when a seedling is planted at time t equals 0, the height of the tree is 1 foot. If h of t is the height of the tree in feet, at time t years after it is planted, then the rate of growth is proportional to the difference between its maximum height, 10 feet, and its current height, and is given by dh dt equals 3 over 20 times the quantity 10 minus h. Part a says to find d2h over dt squared, which is just the second derivative, in terms of h. Use this expression to explain why the graph of the solution curve is concave down. So here's our first derivative, dh dt, and we need to find the second derivative with respect to t. So when taking the derivative with respect to t, first I'm going to drop down this coefficient. So we're just going to drop down 3 over 20. And next we're going to take the derivative of this part right here. The derivative of 10 minus h with respect to t is going to be negative 1. 
But because this is with respect to t and this is an h, we're going to times this by dh dt. So again, essentially we're using implicit differentiation with respect to t. And just a reminder, anytime you take the derivative of a variable that's not t, then you just times by a dh dt. So this is the second derivative, but it says we need it in terms of h. So we don't want to leave this dh dt here. Since dh dt equals this expression, we're going to take this and plug it in for dh dt right here. So now we have the second derivative in terms of h. It's negative 9 over 400 times the quantity 10 minus h. It says to then use this expression to explain why the graph of the solution curve is concave down. So I want to go back up here and point out that it says the height of the tree at time t equals 0 is 1 foot. So that means if we were to plug in 1 right here for h, we would get 9 times negative 9 over 400. And then as the tree grows, so this would be 2 feet and then 3 feet, this value would get smaller, but this value would still be positive. So when we multiply a positive by a negative, we're still going to get a negative. So I just wrote that out since the second derivative is negative for the interval from 1 to 10, the graph of the solution curve is concave down. And again, just a reminder, anytime your second derivative is negative, that indicates that a graph is concave down. Part B says find an equation of the tangent line to the graph of h at the point where t equals 0. Use the tangent line to approximate the height of the tree at t equals 1 year. Is the estimate an overestimate or an underestimate? Explain your reasoning. So to find the equation of a tangent line, we need point and slope. And again, when t equals 0, the height of the tree is 1 foot. So I wrote that here, h of 0 equals 1. Next, we need the slope. So we can use this for our equation for slope. So we're going to evaluate dh dt when h of 0 equals 1. So we have 3 over 20 times the quantity 10 minus 1. This makes 9. So we get 27 over 20 for slope. So now that we have a point and slope, we're going to plug it in to write the equation of the tangent line. So here's our equation, and I'm just going to rewrite it as y equals. So now we're going to use this to approximate the height of the tree when t equals 1 year. So we get 27 over 20 plus 1, which is the same as this fraction plus 20 over 20. So we get 47 over 20, or 2.35. And to answer this last part of the problem, I wrote it out. Since the graph of h is concave down, the tangent line lies above the curve, therefore this value is going to be an overestimate. Part C says find the particular solution to this differential equation with initial value h of 0 equals 1. Part C says find the particular solution to this differential equation with initial value h of 0 equals 1. So first step, we're going to separate the variables. We're going to bring this dt up, and then we're going to move this entire expression, 10 minus h, down to the left. Again, I left this constant on the right. Next, we're going to integrate both sides. To integrate this, technically we're supposed to let u equal the denominator, and when you do so, what happens is you take the derivative and it generates a negative 1. So then you have 1 over u, and the integral of 1 over u is ln absolute value of u. So you get negative ln absolute value of u, and then you plug that u back in, so that makes the 10 minus h right there. Over here we have the integral with respect to t, so this is just a constant. When you integrate that with respect to t, it makes 3 over 20 t. And then we add c over here. Next, we plug in our initial condition, and now we solve for c. So c equals negative ln of 9. So we're going to take this and plug it in right here. So now we solve for h. So first, I want to get rid of this negative. So this becomes positive, and then this term becomes negative. Next, we need to get rid of the natural log, so we're going to exponentiate both sides using base e. So these undo each other. And over here, we're going to split this up. So I wrote it as e to the ln of 9 times e to the negative 3 over 20 times t. So this e to the ln of 9 just becomes 9. Next, we're going to take this out of the absolute value, bringing in a plus or minus to the right side. And we want to check if we're going to use the positive or the negative option here. So we're going to look at this initial value. Since we have 0 for t and 1 for h, if we were to plug in this 1 for h right here, we'd get positive 9. And since we want these two sides to be equal, that means let's go ahead and try this positive 9. So we're going to plug in 0 and 1 right here, and then we're going to use the positive option. And we just want to verify that this gives us a true statement. And it works out. We get 9 equals 9, so that means the positive option does work. So last, we want to just solve for h. So we subtract the 10 over, and then we're going to multiply both sides by a negative. So here's our final answer. We get h equals 10 minus 9e to the negative 3 over 20t.